Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Roller Coaster History Podcast. You are listening to Airtime Traveler, and we have a special edition episode today. We are doing our very first trip report. So this is going to be just a little bit more casual. Just kind of, we're just going to be talking about our experience at King's Dominion today. So I've got a drink here. You'll probably hear me sipping it throughout the episode. I don't know. We're, this is going to be a lot more casual and just kind of having a conversation about our experience at the park. So, but if you haven't had a chance to listen to our podcast before, uh, we do um, individual deep dives into the history of roller coasters. And so if you haven't had a chance to listen to our first four episodes, go and check those out. And if you're a fan of King's Dominion, our new episode will be coming out on Monday and we will be talking about one of the roller coasters at King's Dominion. So I won't spoil it today, but tune in on Monday and we'll be talking about the history of something at King's Dominion. So Yeah, I'm excited for that episode. Yeah, so especially because we'll so. you you did good with holding all of your information on the oh, coaster. It was it was hard. So <laughs> I think it was it was good too that like like when you asked questions, I tried not to just, you know, word vomit everything that I knew about the coaster, but uh, I tried to, you know, just keep it basic and answer your questions. But like when it came to stuff that I knew, I wasn't just like, hey, you want to hear something cool about such and such? You know, I was, you know. Yeah, I, I tried. Stop <laughs> you though a couple of times. There was, there was. I had to stop myself a couple twice, times too. I'd be like, like, do you want to know this? Oh, wait, maybe I should tell you on the podcast. Yeah, I, I would be like, uh, I, I think, I'm not going to spoil it. <laughs> so. And just in case I don't know how the audio sounds, but if we do sound a little sick, that's just because Haley and I caught something while we were on our way back from our trip. And we're on the tail end of it now, I think, so we should be good. But uh, anyway, if if that's why we sound a little Yours is definitely Silly. more in your throat. Yeah, mine's. I don't really notice yours. I I feel mine a little bit more, but I mm-hmm. think it's. I think it's good enough that. I mean, we decided to record. We were like, yeah, I think it's okay. So. Yeah. I don't but if you notice the difference, that's the difference. So. Yeah. <laughs> so. For sure. So, like I mentioned, we're going to be talking about our experience at King's Dominion. So we spent two days at King's Dominion. Mm-hmm. Uh, we spent a Friday and a Saturday because until I think I think now they're just starting to add more days to the schedule, especially next week once Memorial Day hits. Um, that's when they'll that's when the water park opens. That's when they'll go you know full full blown schedule. But right now they're only up on the weekend, so we had to do a Friday Saturday, and. Um, but we, you know, the crowds were really good, and you know, we'll talk more about our experience. But it, it ended up being a, a really good trip, yeah, and we were able it to was get a everything. Great so, trip. and it, so it was our first time, both of us, our first time going to King's Dominion. Um, I technically have been to well, I've been to two Cedar Fair parks. So I went to Knott's Berry Farm for the first time in March. Mm-hmm. Uh, Haley was not able to go with me on that trip because I tagged it onto a to a business trip that I had. But um, and then I I have been to Worlds of Fun, but that was before I was an enthusiast, and I didn't even ride everything while I was there. So that was plus that's a lower tier Cedar yeah. Fair Park, so it's kind of I don't know. They're kind of hoping to go this summer, maybe yeah. a couple weeks even when we possibly when we we're, we're going to be in trip. Kansas City in a couple weeks, so yeah. we could tag it onto that trip. So we'll see. But um, so this was really other than my experience at Knott's Berry Farm, which is I, I would say a mid tier to maybe upper tier Cedar Fair Park, but it's not as big as some of the other parks just because they're limited on space. on space. Yeah. But but Kings Dominion uh, definitely an upper tier Cedar Fair Park in my opinion, and so it was our first time for sure the both of us going and experiencing a Cedar Fair Park together, and it was. It was interesting, you know, definitely a different, uh, different vibe than some of the other parks we've gone to, such as, you know, Silver Dollar City and Disney World, clearly, you know, much, right. much different vibe. So um, I think the first thing I just wanted to talk about, uh, just the atmosphere of the park. So I'll let you kind of just kick it off on yeah. your experience with the atmosphere and we'll just go from there. Yeah. So when you... Here, I'm going to, I'm going to open my, my caramel apple soda <laughs> 
caramel apple in the honor of the the apple themed areas in uh, King's Dominion. So I, there you go. <laughs> I'm surprised it didn't make more of the yeah, sound. That would have sound might have sound good in the in the microphone, but yeah, I guess not. Make people thirsty on there. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> Anyways. So I don't know. I, I really liked the atmosphere in King's Dominion. Um First and foremost, with our premiere pass, it's kind of nice because we get free parking. Um parking's pretty expensive. Um, when you go, so it was nice to just be able to go right in and park, and there wasn't anybody to park you, and because we got there so early in the morning, like, we, like, got right up to the front of the entrance, which was really nice. It wasn't that far of a walk, like, we got right up to the entrance, and was able to, like, you know, not have too far to, to walk to the entrance, so... That was nice. Um, I will say one thing that's kind of interesting about King's Dominion is you don't really see the park until you're basically in the parking mm -hmm. lot. Like, I kind of expected it to be like... Uh, so for those of you who haven't driven through Mason or Doswell, uh, if you drive through Mason for King's Island, as you're driving by, you see the whole park from the from the highway. It's just, you know, you can see everything. There's not a lot of trees in the way, so you can see the whole park. King's Dominion, like, you can see a sign from the highway, and that's it. Mm -hmm. Like, you don't see any of the park until you pull off the, the freeway. And even then, you can only see, like, the tops of the very, the, like, the tallest rides in the park. Mm -hmm. And then you don't really see anything else until you pull in the parking lot. Yeah. So it's kind of interesting how, how different the just the first impressions of the park from the outside right. are. So. Right, right. Um, and so then when you like walk into the entrance, I, I loved the, the looking pool. What's that called? The, the reflection, reflection pool. The reflection mm -hmm. pool. I thought that was very well done and the <coughs> flowers were absolutely stunning and, um, the theming of the, the main street. Main they call street. it, yeah, they call it international street. Yes, I think is the yes, name they have. But it was it. like, I thought it was very well done. It gave me like kind of an Epcot vibe, and yeah, it's kind um, of like a it's like a mini Epcot. Like the the idea is basically mm -hmm. the same as like a World Showcase, just on a much smaller scale. Yes. Like they have like little restaurants to for like Mexico, Italy, Switzerland. Yeah. Um, as you walk up and down International Street, and so yeah, um, yeah I love the. So I'm gonna try not to make too many comparisons between King's Dominion and King's Island, but obviously they're sister parks, so there's a lot of comparisons to be made. They have a lot of rides that are the same. Um, they have a lot of um, same restaurant. Well, not so much the restaurants, but the same rides, and then the, obviously the, the main centerpiece of the park is the same. So there's definitely comparisons to be made between the two. But um, anyway, I think I, I've heard a lot of people constantly talk about how beautiful Bush Gardens Williamsburg is, which is like an hour away from King's Dominion. And granted, I have not been to Bush Gardens yet. Neither of us have. But King's Dominion was really like like a very well picturesque park. Mm -hmm. Very, very scenic. Yeah. Lots of trees, lots of flowers. And yeah. it just, it looked really great. And yeah. I would even say that like the way International Street looks, at King's Dominion, I enjoyed it more than how King's Island looks. Just that whole entry plaza, um, just it, it. I don't know. It looked really great yes. with, all, with all the trees. No, it was agree. really beautiful. I, so. I completely agree with that. So, and then as you're walking around the park, like like Nathan said, it's so picturesque. Like everywhere you go, basically, it's uh, like the flowers are just super well kept and well done. They had like. Um, a flower bed that was like a calendar. And no, the the calendar was oh, at King's Island, but King's, King's Dominion had the one clock. that's that. Yeah, it's a clock. And that yeah. clock was really cool because mm -hmm. it was massive. Number one, number two, like it was an actual working clock, which I thought was really mm -hmm. neat. It was it really like as you walk past the Eiffel Tower, like so. If you're going towards Twisted Timbers, which is at the back of the park, you'll walk around the Eiffel Tower. And then there's like this corridor yeah. of like trees. trees. And oh, it's stunning. Yeah, and like they've got really nice lampposts, and that yeah. clock is down at the very end of that corridor. Mm -hmm. 
um, with the big King's Dominion logo all over the top right. of it. It just, it looked really nice. So. In fact, that's like where we took, I think, our first picture together because it was just so crowded. Like when you first walk in, people yeah, wanted the, to take the, pictures. Over by and, the, the reflection pool uh-huh, and all that. And then like, you know, we're like, oh, we'll try and get a picture later. But then we walked down to this clock and we're like, wow, this is really pretty. Well, we can take a picture here. Yeah, so, so that's what we did is we took the picture there. So, um... But, like, another thing that I loved is how much shade that there was at this park. Like, I felt that, you know, we didn't go on a too hot of a day, but, like, on a hot day, like, that would be really nice to have is all that shade. I mean, there's even a place, like, that you can go and sit in, and it's, like, a tunnel. Yeah, it was, like, it was, it was really like a neat. bunch of vines. If you've been to Kingston, you know what we're talking about, but... It was like they had so many vines laid across this little tunnel that it was like almost pitch black in there. Yeah. And then they had like little rocking chairs in there. So if like you wanted to get out of the sun and yes. just go take a nap. Well, like I they... was going to even mention the rocking chairs. That's something that they did not have at Kings Island mm-hmm. were those rocking chairs. And I thought... That they had those rocking such... chairs in a lot of spots too at well, Kings exactly, Dominion. Exactly, exactly. And I loved that because like, you know, not only like as... You know, because it was just me and you, I, I loved it because I was able to, like, sit off if you wanted to get on a ride. And I took it easy and just rocked. And they were, like, really comfortable compared to, like, sitting on, like, a hard bench or, you know, those little bricks that, like, are like, yeah, lined the just garden a... bed. I don't know. I just thought it was such a well-done attention to detail thing that King's um, Dominion did. Mm -hmm. over king's island and i appreciated that so you know i as a mom too like i feel like that would have been nice to have too for you know taking a rest with kids or whatever or sitting off a ride with kids and anyways but um that was something i really enjoyed with with the rocking chairs for sure yeah i do appreciate when parks make an extra effort to make sure there's lots of shade in in the park because people are comfortable well yeah because like you know this is an industry where everything is open spring through fall and occasionally through the winter but only if you're in a good part of the country Mm -hmm. so you're only open during the hottest part of the year and and yes i know some theme parks you know they use the heat to try to convince people to go on the water rides and go to the water park. But I mean, in the end, like, you know, it's important for people to be comfortable too. And I think Silver Dollar City has plenty of shade and I really appreciate it, you know, going there, especially during the summer, it just, it gets so hot. And, um, you know, that's one of the things I've noticed a lot is like, if you get in line for a coaster, and like it doesn't have shade like that's not hard to do yeah to you know build a little canopy to make sure people are out of the shade especially when they're just waiting yeah you know walking is one thing but when you're waiting in line the last thing you want to be doing is waiting in line in the sun i agree so so especially if you forget sunscreen ouch yeah so (laughs) you know i don't know i just i think king's dominion was very savvy to detail and i liked that about it um you know there's theme throughout the park so yeah let's so let's let's move so we've kind of talked about the overall atmosphere so let's move in you mentioned theming Theming, go ahead and yeah let's talk about the theming say like the theming was very very well done which i don't say because i'm such a big disney lover that it's hard for me to compare that but i thought for them being a smaller park they did really well with it. Mm-hmm. Like they had their section where they had like their new jungle theme and that was really fun to walk through. Like even if you looked on the ground, there was like little like uh, Easter eggs on like the park or like in the one bathroom, there was posters of like the different like mountains or whatever that were associating with the rides and mm-hmm. I don't know. I thought that was just really neat how, how attention to their detail that, that it was. And then, I don't know, like they, they obviously have Planet Snoopy. And then they kind of had like a futuresque kind of theme going on with uh, Flight with, of Fear. Yeah, with Flight of Fear. The, the, yeah, the, the only part of the park that needs a little work as far as theming and not that the rides don't have theming but they're not very cohesive with the other rides around them is just um 
so you mentioned Jungle Expedition, which obviously that's a new development. And, you know, they right. just opened Jungle mm -hmm. Expedition this year. So with them building Tumbili and then retheming mm -hmm. Reptilian and Arachnidia, like it kind of gave that whole section of the park its own story. And I yeah. think they're going to keep expanding that. I think I mentioned to you that they've hinted that there's going to be six rides in that section and they've only got three right now. So there's right. still... Some people think they'll retheme Backlot Stunt Coaster. Some people think they'll retheme Intimidator, which I'm not sure how they would do that without retheming Flight of Fear as well. But I don't know. But that whole section looks really good. And Anaconda isn't technically part of that section, but it's right there and it fits the theme. So Anaconda kind of feels like it fits in there. Right. Um, Flight of Fear has really good theming obviously and especially as an indoor yes. coaster it is a little out of place right. being right next to that. jungle expedition and then with intimidator being a nascar themed ride that uh, you can't do a whole nascar themed section of a park so i understand that you know if you want to have a nascar themed coaster like that's really the only way to do it is kind of right. put it out by itself that's so right. And then Backlot Stunt Coaster doesn't really fit no, in anywhere either. I would either, say that but... was even closer to the Jungle Expedition. It, it like, really is. That so probably um, could definitely be themed, Some so. people think, and I think I mentioned this to you, but they've um, some people have suggested like taking the cars and like turning them into like Jeeps. little Jeeps or yes. something. The so that wouldn't be too hard. The hardest part would be you'd have to you'd have to really retheme the whole yeah. ride because it's. You know, because it's a heavily themed ride and has like an indoor section and stuff like that, like it would be a lot of work to retheme that ride. But it's not it impossible. It's not impossible, and it would be cheaper than tearing it down yeah, and building, building something new. new. So, yeah. but um, but Jungle Expedition looked great, and then the other really big like theme section they have is the Candy Apple Grove. Which yeah. I thought looked really good. They did um, a great job with that. It feels very similar to King's Island's kind of midway section. I'm not sure what, and this is this is what I was going to say. I don't even know what King's Island's section is called, but like I clearly remember easily that the King's Dominions is Candy Apple Grove Candy because. Apple. Yeah. Everything's themed to an apple orchard, right. and including the two coasters in that section, and like everything's so just kind of. What else was like apple themed? I thought that was the, the only two things that were apple themed was the. Well, I think there was there's a couple flat rides over there, like smaller kid rides that we didn't ride that were also themed to apples. Hmm. Here we can I can pull it yeah, up and I'm see, curious. but. Um, <clears throat> But, and then, like, Delirium isn't necessarily themed to, like, apples or anything or an apple orchard. But it does, it feels like it fits in there because that whole section is kind of built to feel like an, like an old-timey carnival. And Delirium kind of fits into that theme. Um, and then, like, they, they have, like, a 50s diner that fits in over there. See, um, I thought that they could have maybe rethemed the... 50s diner to be more theming really well i think yeah. the the if i remember correctly the so wind seekers over there extreme sky flyers over there yeah see they have a they have a ride over there called bad apple and the racers right next to apple's apple as well yep so they have a ride over there called bad apple that's also themed to the apple orchard um so I guess they have uh, it's like three rides that are specifically themed to to an apple apple orchard, but and then the rest of it's kind of like old style carnival. Yeah. So, and like there's like a '50s diner down there, and what yeah, there's something it's called ju jukebox the jukebox diner, diner, yeah, which we did not eat at, but that was one of the places I wanted to. We did eat at it though in King's Yeah, King's Island. King's Island also has one by that name. So. so but they have a carousel over there. They have um like you said, they had uh, the the wind seeker sky down flyer. there, yeah. the sky flyer. They they have a, a Ferris wheel down there that can, that fits that theme as well. So mm -hmm. it it looks good even if, you know, it's kind of a blend between the Apple Grove and like the fifties carnival 
type of you know theming but it, it felt cohesive and like it looked it looked really well like put together so yeah so i i enjoyed that so um as far as individual rides theming um Flight of Fear, I think, definitely takes the cake oh, as yes. far as theming is yes, concerned. Is. Not so much while you're on the ride, but definitely mm-hmm. leading up yes. to the ride and the, the queue. queue is amazing. Mm-hmm. The queue reminded me of like, like a, a Disney ride yes. almost. Yeah. So like definitely like a spaceship, spaceship not Earth, but um, wow, Space Mountain, like a Space Mountain kind of vibe. Yeah, it's a little kind bit. Of with like a sci-fi theming like the whole area. yeah when you like walk into the the ufo before you hop on the the train so yeah it was well done i thought yep i thought they did a great job with theming there yep the theming for backlot stunt coaster was pretty good mm-hmm. um didn't necessarily have a storyline per se but like the, i liked twisted timbers theming though too I twisted timbers has pretty good theming if like you're I paying think, attention yeah um like if you're just for us, because the lines were so short, like yeah, when it, it get to sit in the queues or anything. Yeah, well, and one thing uh, that I noticed as just looking around while we're walking through the queue is they do have signs up that kind of tell you the story as you're going through the queue, but because we didn't, the longest we waited for that ride was five minutes, oh, yeah. which is insane for yeah. Twisted Timbers. But we'll, yeah. we'll get into that. But um. Yeah, so if you are waiting in line, you will like you'll know the story of the ride and right. all that by the time you get to the front. And it has a it has an interesting story, and um, it has a theme, obviously. So right. which is I appreciate that. So um, I liked um, what else was I going to mention? Um. Intimidator 305 had a great theming with the whole NASCAR theme. Yeah, it has a really nice looking plaza too. Like it does. they uh, they they didn't just like throw up a ride entrance and call it good. Like they really yeah. made that whole area look really well with like even a full size Dale Earnhardt car yeah. with like a little memorial with all of his wins. Yeah. And like a big old three on the ground with his signature. Like they did a really and they did a great job for with it. Those of you that don't know, I'm a fan of NASCAR, so like, for someone who is, actually pays attention to NASCAR and all that, like, they did a really good job with it. And um, even the trains, like, they did a really good job um, with the theme and, like, even the little, like, um, sponsor stickers on the on the trains and stuff looked really good. So, yeah. um, it was well done. It was yeah. well done. I like the theming there. So, probably a little outdated, um, if I'm being completely honest, even though I am a NASCAR fan currently. I, I completely recognize most people are not. And maybe another theme would be more attractive to the general public. Um, so I, I would not be surprised if it gets rethemed at some point, even we'll though see. it has a really nice plaza. Um, but I don't know, we'll see. We'll see. So. Yeah. So overall, I really liked King's Dominion's theming and their atmosphere. I thought it was. Well done. Well, mm-hmm. well, so. Yeah. I definitely think they have room to, you know, because if, if you were to break down the park, you really have the Jungle Expedition section, International Street, and then, like, the Candy Apple Grove. And from there, some of the other rides just kind of, well, in Planet Snoopy. Planet Snoopy. Right. But then everything else, like, other rides just kind of sit by themselves. Like, yeah. Dominator... It's just there. It's just by right. itself. <laughs> um, well, even Boo, like, Blasters. Boo Blasters. Boo like Blasters is way out. We way. couldn't even like when when we were got we to the go end. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the first day, we were like trying to decide. You know, what should we go on next? And I was like, I remembered. I was like, wait a minute. We haven't even been. We haven't been on Blue Blasters. I haven't even seen Boo Blasters. Yeah. I have no idea where it's at. So I had to like open it up in the yeah. app. It was and it's in. yeah, it's like in between like Dominator and Planet Snoopy. Yeah, but it's like on the back side of yeah. both of them. So yeah. like you either have to walk all the way through Planet Snoopy, or you have to take like this weird path between Dominator and Woodstock Express that no one is ever on. I I saw like four people on that path the whole time we were there. So, but that's like the best way to get there from yeah. the front of the park. But 
yeah, it's very hidden, and yeah. so it's, it's very kind of odd that it's kind of hidden back there by itself, but... Um, I liked the cue, though, for boot blasters, like walking through, like, mm-hmm. kind of the picturesque creeks and water, and, like, it still had a spooky vibe, but it was pretty. Yeah, like, I liked it was it. nice, so... Um, and then Grizzly is kind of off on its own, too. Um, I don't know, it fits so the... So Dominator, though. Yeah, yeah. So there's there's definitely a few rides that are just kind of off on their own, and maybe you could add more rides in the future to kind of include yeah, them in a new section, or, or you need to retheme them to fit in a section that's already there. I don't know how you'd do that with Dominator though, just because it's at the front. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's li- not only is it themed by itself, but like it's literally by itself. There's, yeah, there's it's not much the closest you can thing is Planet Snoopy. You can't theme it. You can't theme it to Planet <laughs> Snoopy. So um, anyway, Dominator has a great like paint scheme, and the the plaza that they designed for it looks great. Yeah. And like, they're just blasting some music, which, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't I didn't have a problem it, with the way it looks. There's just it a just, story or theming No, it. no, no theming behind it. So, which, you know, for some rides it's fine. But, mm-hmm. you know, theming always adds a little extra, in my opinion. Yeah. So. A little extra. Dust of magic. I mean, that's, that's why, you know, Disney and <laughs> Universal get the praise that they that's do. For the theming they, they put into every single ride. So. Yeah. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers um, oh. theming. Do so, we get to talk about food Yes, now? let's Yay. talk about food. I know I Haley's excited about this. I'm really excited to talk <laughs> about food. So do I get to start? Yeah, you go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Sweet. Start. Okay. All right. Well, I <laughs> I don't know if our podcast knows, but I have food we allergies. Haven't, we haven't talked about this, so they don't know yet. Okay, so I have food allergies, so I'm allergic to gluten and dairy and egg, which a lot of people are like, that's so many allergies. How do you live your life? And and it's not easy, especially at amusement parks where it's carnival food, your typical, like, nachos or, like, I don't know, pizza. Pizza, burgers. hot dogs. Yeah, yeah, you know, like, just your typical, like, <clears throat> carnival amusement park food and so like it's really hard and I was quite nervous to go and and try and find food there and I was like okay well worst comes to worst there's a Chick-fil-a that I might be able to like go in and and look there um usually food there. usually Chick-fil-a's are like fast food restaurant of choice because they right. do very good for right. for people with allergies yeah, so that's true um so I mean I gosh I don't even know where to start with King's Dominion they did a great job with my food allergies. Um, so, I mean, we started, I think. So, yeah. So I want to, French fries. so let's see, I'm trying to remember what the place, that place was called. It wasn't boardwalk fries. No, um, it was, over it was in the jungle excavators there. taters. That's where yes. we went. So it's, yes. that's an, I think that's, so that's a new place that is, um, over in jungle expedition. Yep. It's kind of right over by Tumbili. Right. Right. Um, And so it was really awesome. I had a great experience with them. Um, The staff was excellent on uh, providing the necessary things that um, I needed. Um, Well, and one of the things you said you loved about King's Dominion was that each place we went to, they had like a binder. Yeah, they had a food allergy binder. mm -hmm. and So they could like literally grab it and like walk you through like which food items had what in them so that you could kind of custom build like a meal that would fit in your... And they were your... great about custom customizing things mm-hmm. to what I wanted. So I really appreciated that. And I appreciated them like saying, okay, you can have this or this and we can change this to fit what you need. Um, so I really liked liked that about King's Dominion because um, we went to Excavator Taters and the staff was great. And because we went early enough, they didn't even season, like, the pork yet. So they are like, well, we can just leave it, like, bland for you. And not bland, but, like, not putting Without all the seasoning on it, yeah. So and I was like, that'd be great. And so, like, they, they were just awesome. <laughs> I really appreciated that. Um, I guess the other place that we went to that I loved was... Um, well, so, Grill. yeah, so... so... Well, I was well, going to walk through each one that okay. we went to. So we went to the Excavator's Taters. 
place to No, that was that was King's Island that we did that. What didn't we sit in a booth just you and I and we had I thought I had Oh like... no. Oh, and we took these trips back to back, so they're they're kind of blending to together. Yeah, I'm, gonna look. I'm trying to remember what the the next place we went to that evening was. Um, uh, wasn't um. Oh no, we we ate outside the park that night. We left we left early and we went and right, got dinner because... somewhere. That's right. Yeah, because we went with some friends of ours that day, and they, mm-hmm. they wanted to take us to a local place that they, they were, they're from that area, and right. so they wanted to take us somewhere mm-hmm. that they really liked. But, so So the next day, yeah. so that was Friday, we just we just ate at Excavator's Taters, right. which so is then, just like a typical loaded fry place. Lots of amusement parks have them, mm-hmm. um, but it was really good. It was fantastic. So yeah, then the like, next, so yep, so then the next day we went for lunch... To... It was that booth place. I want to say, was it Dogwood Grill? No, it wasn't Dogwood Grill. Country Kitchen. I think that's where we went. That's right. I remember that now because I wanted to do the the um, build your own mac and cheese place, right. and, we and it was closed. closed. I we were so mad. And and this is something that has happened now. So this will be my first complaint because um, this was also an experience I had when I went to Knott's Berry Farm a couple months ago where you go, when you go to amusement parks, they're always very, well, they should be. Most of the time, they're always very upfront about what rides are closed mm-hmm. for the day. They either put it on the app or they put it on the website. They put it at the front of the park. King's Dominion, they have like a site. I did forget to mention this. You go to King's Dominion and they have like this, they have these TV screens at the front of the park that clearly list what rides are closed that day. More parks need to do that. I yeah, loved that. That was great. Because it made it very clear. So Flight of Fear was closed the first day that we went there, but I had heard it was going to open Saturday. And so when we got there Saturday morning, I went straight to that TV and I looked at all the rides that were closed and Flight of Fear wasn't on there. So I was like, great. Flight of Fear's line's going to get crazy, so let's go there first. Um, and sure enough, it was open. So, um, anyway, just a little off topic there. Every park needs to be had. It's not that hard to have a TV at the front of the park that just clearly states what's open and what's closed. My complaint is, why can't they do that with restaurants? Because I know that these places aren't closed permanently. They're just closed right now because they don't have the staff to, to keep them open. Right. Which I understand. That's fine. But don't put it on the app and get me, you know, like have a place, you know. And then when I'm going through the app, I'm like, oh, I'm going to try this place. And then I get there and there's just a sign up front that says, sorry, we're closed yeah. today. Um, <clears throat> it's Yeah, it's not that hard to do. And the reason I bring it up is because at Knott's Berry Farm, that happened to me not once, but twice. Mm. So... I was been mad. <laughs> I know. So it, happened, so it happened the first night, and then this, I was at Knott's Berry Farm two days, and both days it happened to me. So it, it's not... And I, so I don't know if this is just a Cedar Fair thing, but um, it's not that hard if a restaurant is going to be closed for a certain amount of time because you don't have the staff, just take it off the app. Or, you know, put it on the sign at the front of the park that says it's closed. Not that difficult to do. So, yeah. anyway, then there's my little spiel on that. But, no, that's fine. So, so we went to Country Kitchen. Right. Which, even though I was excited about mac and cheese, Country Kitchen was very good. It was very good. It was very good. And the lady that helped me was so sweet. She I mean, was awesome. She was... We should have t- taken her name down so we could shout her out on the podcast. I'll have yeah. to remember to do that in the future. Yeah. Um, she, she was, was great. She was amazing. Like she was like, "Oh, don't you worry, honey." Yeah, she's like, I it's, asked it's, it. she, she "Yeah, well, she was like, it, she's like, it's my job to make sure that you're happy." And I was like, "I love that." So, yeah, very, very well done by her. So, she was fantastic. Um, but anyways, so she helped me get a great meal, and we were able to eat really great for lunch. And then for dinner, we went to Green and Grill because that was one of the places I was like, I want to try their stuff. Well, so not bad. only did you want to try it, but when I had asked people, like, where do you go, 
like what's your number one place to get food at King's Dominion? And the place I had recommended time and time again was Crane and Grill. Yeah. And so we made sure like <clears throat> they would have stuff that she, that Haley could eat. And they did. So we're like, okay, we're gonna do Crane and Grill. That'll that'll be our, our Saturday Saturday night dinner, we'll, we'll do Grain and Grill, and it did not disappoint. It was very good. So it's, it's on International Street. I think it's Switzerland-themed? I don't know. It's at the very back corner, like right <laughs> by the Eiffel Tower. I think um, it had a Swiss flag hanging from it, so I think it's a Switzerland. But something. anyway, it the was... The food wasn't really Swiss, but it was still delicious. Well, I wouldn't know. I don't know what Swiss food is. I'm guessing Swiss cheese doesn't count, so... It's kind of a bit, yeah. <laughs> But I was very, very impressed. The food was not only amazing, it was presented great. Like, mm-hmm. I even took, like, a picture of it because I was like, this looks and again, amazing. And again, the chef there was fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. To, in helping you out. Like, he didn't he, even have to look at a binder. Like, he knew he his knew. food by like, the back of his hand, and he knew what was in everything. Yeah. And, like, he walked you through all your options and like even pointed to like each and everything he's like yep that has this and this and this in it yep and you can't have that one but you can have this one and like he just he was on the ball he He was was fantastic so i was very much appreciative of him so so anyways i had the the grilled shrimp with the vegetables on the side and oh my heavenly it was so good um you know, obviously it's not your five course, you know, star restaurant, but for an amusement park, I was very, very yeah. well, excited I don't think... and, and appreciative of how good it was and how well the chefs did with, with my food allergies. Yeah. Well, and on our budget, we, we really didn't plan on doing anything sit down anyway. I mean, we just really wanted wasn't to do to sit down there. I don't remember seeing one at King's Dominion. I know King's Island has at least one, but um, anyway. So, you know, you're not eating food that, you know, you're going to get at the, you know, like Liberty uh, Grill. Well, I was going to say like at Liberty Tree at, you know, Disney Magic World. Kingdom yeah. or whatever. But, you know, you're you're getting really good food and great service. Like, our, needless to say, our experience with food at King's Dominion was really Sweet. well. Minus the fact that they should be putting restaurant closures at the front of the I park, think the so. only other food complaint I had is I wish that they put the menu on the app. Um, because I felt like that would have been nice to be able to like open and be like, oh, this restaurant has this and this and this there. And this restaurant has this and this and this there. Um, instead of just like reading <coughs> the description of each restaurant. Like I thought that was kind of frustrating. Hmm. Um Especially because in their app they have like a special dietary, like food thing. And right. Like it was right. okay, but it wasn't as nice as like being able to go straight up and like talk to the, the people personally and being like, okay, this is my food allergy. These are my food allergies. What can I work with? Um, mm-hmm. But even then, like I still wish, like you know, with you know Cody and Pam, our friends that came with us and you. Like, I wish they could have said, like, okay, well, this is what we have to offer at the restaurant. Like, and then we could have picked from what they had to offer at each restaurant. Like, mm-hmm. I felt like that would have been hard. That's not hard to add on the app is, like, the menu for each thing. Yeah, like, I don't know. They don't even have to put the prices. Just put, like, what they have at each place kind of thing. Yeah, so. I know what you mean. So. Anyways, yep. that was my only complaint with food there. The last thing I will say, which is kind of food related, kind of not. There was at one point on Saturday that we went to up to a vending machine to get some water. And when I swiped my card, it said that it was a cash only vending machine. <laughs> King's Dominion is a cashless park. <laughs> so King's Dominion, if you're listening... You've got a vending machine. I don't even. I don't even remember where it was. There was a vending machine somewhere in your park that is cash only, and you don't offer cash at the park. Like you can, even if you bring cash to the park, they won't accept it. Anyway. They won't accept it. You have to go to one of their um, ATMs, put the cash in, and then they give you a gift card back, which you can then use at the different restaurants yeah, and stuff. I that was funny. So. But I didn't have any cash on me because it's a cashless so park. I so I, could, so I had to find another vending machine. So anyway, yeah. it was funny now. But at the time, I was like, 
Oh. Are you kidding me? It's <laughs> a cashless park. <clears throat> so, anyway, just King's Dominion. If you find that vending machine, you get that fixed. <laughs> Especially because it had a card. Like, it had Swiper. a card reader on it. And when I swiped my card, it said cash, cash only. only. I'm like, well, then why do you have a freaking card reader? <laughs> anyway. So. Okay. Two cents. Yeah, it was two cents on that. <laughs> All right, so I think that covers kind of the atmosphere and the food experience we had. Yeah. So now let's talk about everyone's favorite. Let's talk about the rides. So first, um, we'll get to coasters last. Let's talk about non-coaster rides that we did, which we didn't do a ton. Right, especially um, because we didn't have Parker Yeah, we, we did not have our son with us, so we kind of just were doing whatever we wanted so to do. Nice. It was, it was very nice. We, Don't we'll, get me wrong. We, we'll do my son, but that was the first time we got to do something just you and I for a while. It was the first time you and I had been to an amusement park by ourselves in over a year. Yeah, it'd been I or think anywhere. <laughs> was I think it was Silver Dollar City last year was the last time. Yeah. So. No, Hershey. Well, we did Silver Dollar City after Hershey. That's right. Yep. Yeah, so. Um. But yeah, so it was nice, and we'll do another, uh, so we went to Kings Island the week after we went to Kings Dominion, and we'll do another trip report on that experience, but when we went to Kings Island, we we had Parker with us, and so we did a lot more of the, the flat rides and some of the kid stuff, so, right. but anyway, we'll, we'll discuss that. So the few rides that we did, the few non-coast rides we did do... So, um, so let's start with, so we did Boo Blasters, yeah. which we talked about a little bit. Yeah. If you're unfamiliar, Boo Blasters is it's a, a shooting, typical yeah. shooting, you know, fam, family yeah. style shooting game. Um, it's, it used to be a Scooby-Doo themed ride. Which you can tell. Yeah. So they've kind of just, you know, taken away the Hanna-Barbera <laughs> recognizable characters and it still has remained like a spooky, spooky themed. themed. I, I like to think of it as Haunted Mansion crossed with well, Toy Story Mania, but not kind of maybe Buzz Lightyear. Yeah. That'd probably be the better way to put it. Like it's like it's like Haunted Mansion Lightyear. mixed with Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger spin. Yeah. That's probably the best way to put it. So though, like... lots of black lights to kind of you know make the colors pop and stuff. Yeah. So. So it was Surprisingly fun. spooky, though. Like yes. it never, it never scared me. But like, there was parts kids, of it that I was like, was "Oh, like, this might be a little much for like a four yeah, or five year old." Like, like the, one, <laughs> the one scene where you go through and it's like, yeah, at the black, at the very end, it's black and, and there's, like, there's just like skeletons with red eyes, with red eyes hiding in the dark. Terrifying. I was like, "Oh, that's a little like, intense a for child, little kids." Well, even like me, like I was thinking, like if I were to like be like I was when I was a child like I was terrified of the dark like absolutely terrified of mm -hmm. the dark and so that part would have freaked me out <laughs> you know being an adult obviously I know they're just like you know yeah, it doesn't freak, matter, but like as a child like you know even up to like I was 12 like I was terrified I would not go in the dark like period yeah um so that was hard like like interesting for me like you know I probably wouldn't take kids. I don't know. I don't know if I would take kids on it. I, did, I guess it depends on their well, skill level. Well, yeah. Well, because when we did it, so, and we'll talk more about King's Island's version next time, but we did, we put Parker on King's Island's version, which is very similar. Right. And he seemed fine, mm -hmm. but he, I'm not sure he's old enough to understand what is quote unquote scary. So, I don't know. Right. So, I mean, I, <clears throat> I liked. But it was fun, though. Like, it was a lot of yeah. fun. I, I liked it because it was kind of like, let's go digest our food and go on boot blasters kind of, right? And yep, yep. It was fun. There, uh, there was no wait because it was so hidden. And so, like, you could really go <laughs> no, in No one knows on where it and, like, is. <laughs> you know? So it was nice. And then, like, like I said, the queue was really nice to walk through. And I thought they did a great job with theming. Um, so... Um, I really liked the synchronization too of like the gun 
like with your laser like i thought that was kind of nice to be able to shoot i like games like where you're able to like oh that that actual, well that it, like, you know you could actually see where you were shooting yeah, yeah yeah i like that instead of like not knowing where like you're aiming like and it's just like oh here let me like can you a toy gun so, did i get points for that oh no I no didn't. i didn't yeah, I was, <laughs> um but it was nice because it was like literally like when you push your finger on the uh trigger when, yeah uh, it was an actual, like, laser, and so, like, you could see where you were shooting, and I thought that was kind of fun. So, um, anyways, I like shooting rides. I think they're a lot of fun. I, obviously, I think my favorite one I've been on is the one in Hershey. Um, oh, the, the Reese's Cup Fusion? I thought that one was amazing. The technology that, um, they've put into some of the more recent ones are pretty impressive. It's like, that one, like, their your gun doesn't physically like put like shoot a laser out or anything but the projectors on the ride sense where you're aiming and like where the based on what color your gun is you can see i think i don't remember what you were if you were shooting reese's cups or whatever it was but it was like the bad guy that the reese's cups. well you, whatever what i meant is like whatever your gun was shooting um i don't remember what the gun was shooting out from it i don't know Whatever it was, it was the color of your gun, and like the projector would actually show it on screen, yeah. so you could see where you were shooting. Yeah. And so, anyways, it was a fun ride. But like I said, like Boo Blasters at King's Dominion, and I'll compare it to King's Island versus King's Island. I will say I like certain aspects of King's Dominion more than I liked King's Island, and one of them was the synchronization of the gun. Like I thought that was. Yeah, we'll, nice we'll talk more about King's Islands, but King's Island, when you shoot the gun, you didn't see where it, it doesn't. Up. It doesn't show a laser. It doesn't show anything. Which I thought was a so, weird change. And while well, did they even make a sound when you hit a target? No, I don't think no, it did. No. So I don't know. Well, like I said, we'll talk about King's Islands next time. But King's Dominion, it was very clear where you're shooting, mm -hmm. made it more enjoyable mm -hmm. in in my in my opinion. So. Right. So, so then, then the other one, yeah, go ahead. So then the other, we did the uh, the Blue Ridge Tollway, mm -hmm. which is um, it's a it's just a tame um, like well, it's it's like um, oh, like just one of those antique car rides where you know it's just a motorized car, but there's like a rail in the middle so that you can't you know veer off course and. It's just a fun little drive through the woods. It was very scenic. I enjoyed that. Yeah. Kind of short, but, you know, yeah. it was fine. Um, yeah. I, I know it's a really popular ride among families. They even have a, a fast lane option for that ride. Um, yeah. You know, I'm sure it gets it was, really crazy during the summer. So. Yeah. It was fun. I liked that. I thought it was, again, a nice way to take a break from... Yeah. Was... See, I, I prefer those over like Tomorrowland Speedway at Disney World. Because like Tomorrowland, it's the same concept, but you're just driving around a racetrack, but you're not going that fast. So it doesn't feel like you're racing. Right. Whereas these ones, you're not racing. You know, it's very clear you're yeah. just on a scenic drive. Right. And, and the speed place, matches that. Like, they put, like, it, it's an antique car, but they put it still on, like, a little track where, like, you can't veer off, but you still have steering control ability. Yeah, so, like, which is the same as Tomorrowland Speedway. Right, but yeah. it was still fun because it was just, like, you know, because it was a little bit more scenic. Like, you weren't going fast. You just, you had control over the car to a point. Like, I don't know. I thought it was fun, and I loved the whole... whole antique car vibe like i thought that was yeah. like a fun little touch of like uh i don't know like a, <coughs> one of the first rides in the park i thought that was kind of neat and kind of an old history touch to it and vibe i don't know yeah. i liked it yep cute ride so, so. anyways i think those are the only two non-coaster rides. yeah oh. our our friends did delirium we're not a huge fan of <laughs> the big swing rides so no. we we didn't do do that one. I'm trying to think if there was. I don't think, I don't there, was think there was anything else, else we did. Because I don't even think we went on the carousel. We didn't do that. Um, we went on the one in Kings Island, but not <clears throat> Kings Dominion. Yeah. No, we didn't go. You'll on you'll Kings discover 
<laughs> about us pretty quick, especially myself, that I'm not really a fan of too many flat rides. Like, I can ride coasters all day, mm -hmm. but when it comes to flat rides, like, a lot of them make me really sick, just mm -hmm. because they, like, do a lot of spinning. So I, I didn't do, like, Arachnidia. Wind I didn't sleeper. do... Windseeker. Windseeker, I just don't like how high up you are, just hanging there. That freaks me out. Um... I mean, I would do it if I, like, I, I could do it if I had to, but I would prefer not to. Yeah. I don't particularly like drop towers, like, yeah. um, Berserker just hangs you upside down. The, I'm not a fan of that either. I don't know. I, I just prefer to be on a coaster. I don't know. I, I enjoy coasters you're, more. You're so. a coaster fan. Yeah, I mean, that's... That's what we paid to go into to do, and that's, that's true. what we so. did, so... Anyways. So, that was our flat rides and dark rides and all that, so. All right, we'll take it away, Nathan. So, oh, the one thing I will mention, the Eiffel Tower was closed. Yes. We probably would have done that if it had been open, but it was closed the whole time we were there, so. Yep. Alrighty. Well, shall we get into the roller coasters? Yeah, take it away. Okay, so this is how we're going to do it. We're going to start, I'm going to be using the coaster bot rankings, and we're going to go from lowest rank to highest rank according to coaster bot, and just we'll each share our experience with that coaster. There is two that Haley didn't go on. Yeah. So she didn't go on Grizzly, because I told her not to. I didn't have a headache. <laughs> so you, the, the, the first ride that you went on on it was with Cody and Pam and yourself but I stayed off because I had a headache so I was like mm, I rather yeah you know, just kind well of and like a like we said the park was pretty dead so we're like eh, if you want to get on it later you can right well then I wrote it and I told her not to and I'll, I'll get into why I told her not to get on it when we talk about and it then but the other one I absolutely refused to get on was Tim Bealey. I was like nope <laughs> I don't do those like I don't know. It's she just, gets pretty... I wouldn't say, like, motion sick, but, like... She's had vertigo in the past, so we have to be careful with some rides that we put her on. And that one's one where we're, like... Uh, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, as a general problem, like, I can't comment on that one. So, but, but that's fine. Well, let's actually... Let's talk about Toon Bealey first, because... That is not on the coaster bot rankings because it's a brand new ride. So, so one thing. Um, so I'll talk about my experience with Tumbili. It's the first time that I've been on one of these SNS free spin coasters, and that's because I haven't been to a Six Flags Park in a really long time, and that's where most of them are at. In fact, almost every Six Flags Park has one of them at this point, but. This is the first time Cedar Fair has bought one. And so me and my friend Cody, we got um, one ride on Toon Bealey. And it was so much fun. It was crazy. I was worried I wasn't going to get sick on it. But um, we had, um, I think, so, because there's kind of, you do like three passes. You do like one, one pass over the top and then a second one and then like a, I don't know, you go down, do another pass, go down a third time, and make a final pass, and then you come down one more time as you come back into the station. So on our first pass up at the top, I think we flipped upside down one time. And then as we came down the second pass, we got a lot of swinging back and forth. But as we went through the turnaround to the third pass, we got such an intense flip. We flipped three times in a row. See, that's why I'm not and... going on it. <laughs> Three, it was three times in a row, and it was so fast. I, I told I told Haley, I thought my shoes were going to fly off. It was, and, and like every ride is totally different on, on these free spins. So I may have just gotten a really good ride, or maybe they're all like that, or um, it's probably hit and miss. But um, anyway, it was awesome. And then we had, we almost flipped over one more time as we were coming into the station, but we kind of stalled and then flipped. And then swung back into place. And so I think we, it was either four or five flips that we got on it, which was really awesome. So. You say awesome. I say blah. Well, I, I know <laughs> that that's your opinion, but I liked it. So. Teach their own. Exactly. So 
The theming is also fantastic on Tumbili. We've already talked to the theming for that whole section of the park. So a lot of people say, so Bush Gardens Williamsburg just opened Pantheon um, about an hour away. And Pantheon's like this massive, huge investment coaster, fastest in the park. And people are like, well, Tumbili's better themed than Pantheon is. So it is kind of funny how Kings Dominion really put in the effort. Like my favorite touch is still that they painted the support structure to look like bamboo. Like that's just a great touch to, yeah. that really makes it fit in with the, the park. And um, yeah, so it was a fun ride. I really enjoyed it. So, okay. So now going from the bottom to the top of the coaster bot rankings, let's start with, um, so we're, we'll talk about each of the coasters and then at the very end, Haley and I will give our rank for the coasters that we rode at Kings Dominion. So let's start with the PTC Wooden Family Coaster Woodstock Express. So since I just talked about Tumbili, I'll let you start with Woodstock okay. Express. I mean, Woodstock was cute. It was in um, Planet Snoopy, so it was definitely more of like a family-based roller coaster, so more based towards children. Like kids, especially like your older kids, kind of thing. Um, theming I thought was was well done. They had some Snoopy characters. Um, I mean, peanut characters, peanut mm-hmm. characters, and um, like on the outside part of the queue. Um, and then it was painted blue, so I thought that I like the the paint job looks yeah, pretty good I on it. The paint job was great. Um, I will say that we were a bit smushed. Yeah, I, wish, I did not I realize wish we would have like rode separately. Yeah, if I had parts. known how small those <laughs> seats were, that's what I would have done. But we didn't realize it until we but, sat down and we're like, "Oh, yeah, this is really like, small. Little, it's meant it's meant for two. <laughs> well, it's meant for either I think either two kids or a parent and a yeah. kid, not two adults. <laughs> so, no. but we did make it work." Yeah. Surprisingly. Yeah. But it was fun. I thought, like, you know, we even got a little bit of airtime on there, which was, yeah. I thought, crazy. My, but... my hot take for Woodstock Express is it was my favorite wooden coaster at King's Dominion. Maybe. And the reason is the restraints. Yeah. So, I mean, I'll talk about Grizzly and Racer 75 in a second, but Woodstock Express only has buzz bars, which... I don't know if you're familiar with that term, but basically that means it's just a lap bar. And it doesn't come, like, all the way down to your lap. It literally, it just kind of comes down. And no matter how big you are, it's in the same spot. Right. So, and because it's a small coaster, they can do that. And it's like, you know, it, that's how big Thunder Mountain is, right? Like, the it just has one bar that comes down. And so it leaves plenty of room for you to get airtime yeah. where the other rides didn't really have that. And the seats were not very comfortable on the other one. So... Woodstock Express, we got some decent airtime on it for that small coaster. So, anyway, I really, I really enjoyed Woodstock Express more than I thought I would. So, yeah. So, not a lot to say there. It's, you know, it is what it is. Small family wooden coaster, but more fun than I anticipated. Yeah. So, then next is Apple Zapple. Okay. Mock Rides Wild Mouse. Right. So right over by Twisted Timbers. Um, I I enjoyed it. Um, it's the fourth Wild Mouse coaster I've been on, including some of the spinning Wild Mouse coasters. Um, it's my favorite Wild Mouse I've been on so far. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, I think it, I like the Exterminator better at Kennywood, but I did like... Apple's Apple. I thought it was a little bit more smoother than other wild mouses. Yeah, it's a little bit newer. Let's see, when did they, it was built in 2002, so yeah. a lot of them were built in the 90s. And I was so, going to say, the one in Idlewild is really old. And <laughs> well, that one's... Do you think you need a chiropractor? That one's been go. relocated, too, so I'm sure that doesn't help. What, really? So, mm-hmm. No, like it was relocated to Idlewild. Oh, I was gonna say they. No, it's still it's still there. It was, but it wasn't didn't start there. So, yeah. But we'll leave that for an episode of Airtime Traveler. So. But you've never <laughs> been there. No, I gotta ride it first. Um, but yeah, I I liked Apple's Apple. The the turns on the so most 
wild mouse are just kind of 90 degree, 90, 180 degree turns. Um, these ones were kind of like weird shapes where it was like almost like a 200 degree turn and they kind of like, I don't know, it was just the, the turns were really interesting, so, okay. All right, so I think that's pretty much all to say about Apple's Apple. I mean, it's a wild mouse. You kind of know what you're getting. Yep. So now from here is kind of where things get interesting. So next is actually Anaconda. Hmm. Okay. So I'll let you start talk about Anaconda, which was an aerodynamics looping coaster built in 1991. I... I don't know. I... <laughs> I felt like they needed it retract or something to make it less bumpy because I feel like that ride could be so much fun and like the theming was great. I thought like everything was really well done except for how thrown you get on that ride. Like I just felt like it was a little bit bumpier than I would have liked. Yeah, it's the the old arrow loopers are they're tricky because Arrow is out of business now. So, like, if they want retracking work done on them. Yeah, so kind of like when we talked about Phantom's Revenge, like, they had Morgan had to come in and do the retracking work for Anaconda, or for Phantom's Revenge. Um, so, which, it worked in their case, but I'm not sure every park is willing to put in the money to, to get retrack work done for you know yeah. right and, and to be fair even even phantom's revenge only a part of the ride was retracked most of it was completely rebuilt from scratch so right um i don't know i don't know what they'll do with anaconda because i didn't hate I it. Love it i like, love it going over the water and it's a great like... the one thing and this is going to come up with multiple coasters here in a second but King's Dominion kind of has, they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place right now where they have a couple really great coasters, mm -hmm. like S-tier coasters. And then they have just a, a lot of filler. And some of it's really good filler, like, um, you know, some of these I'll talk about. I really enjoyed them. But they're not, you know, you're not going to be putting them in your top ten list. Right. Um, and then they've got a couple of coasters that if they got torn out, people probably wouldn't miss them. Right. But they've already torn out in the last, well, when, let's see, XLC got torn out in 2007, I think. So in the last 15 years, they've already torn out two top tier coasters. Um, one in 2007 and one in 2018. So they're really bottom heavy right now. Especially with Tumbili. Tumbili is going to be another one that's kind of just a mid middle tier coaster. I think for their 50th anniversary, they're probably going to build something huge. Right. And that will be probably their, you know, their new big headliner. But if they start getting rid of some of these other coasters, like they're just, I don't know. They've, they're falling behind some of the other Cedar Fair parks, in my opinion, as far as rides are concerned. Because they're tearing them out almost as fast as they're building them at this point. Where King's Island, well, yeah, King's Island's actually torn out a couple in the past few years too. So, I don't know. Maybe that's, I, I guess Carowinds is really the only one right now that isn't tearing things out. Mm -hmm. It's just putting new stuff in. So, anyway, the pandemic's made it kind of an interesting situation where Cedar Fair kind of stopped building things for the past few years and... Now they're just finally starting to get back into things as people are going back to the parks. So, right. so that being said, I don't know what they would do with Anaconda. I think they're leaving it there because it is, um, like it, it still draws fairly big lines for, right. you know, I think a lot of people just kind of look at it and like you said, it looks really great and like it is. I would say the first half of the ride is pretty good. And then once you get past the brake run, like it gets pretty bumpy after that. And, um, yeah. So, and then, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a bittersweet experience for me. It was good, but 
I, I can see where it would have been a lot better in 1991. Right. <laughs> so... Okay, the next one, which this one's probably going to be ranked higher because it's had a retheme since the coaster bot rankings from last year. So this one is Reptilian, the bobsled coaster from Mock Rides, built in 1988. I loved it. It was so much fun. I loved it. It was that a lot was of fun. Way faster than I thought it was mm-hmm. going to be. Like I thought it was going to be more like a slide feeling, but it was definitely like fast and. The whole concept of, like, it's, you know, me sitting basically, like, in your lap, like, and, I don't know, like, it was just so different than anything I've been on, but, like, at the same time, it was fun. Like, I loved, like, the wishing feeling of, like, you coming up into the turn and thinking that you're gonna go up and over the edge, but really it's, you know, fine, but... Anyways, I thought that was a really fun ride. And it was. So this is the first time, first bobsled coaster that both of us had been on. Mm-hmm. And just based on what I've heard from other people and just watching POVs, like, it seemed like a fairly tame ride, which I was fine with. I'm, I'm okay with, a, you know, a tame coaster. I, you know, I still enjoy them. But it, it had a lot more punch to it than I anticipated. And there's even one section at the very end of the ride... Mm-hmm where you come out of one turn and then you kind of go up and over just a tiny hill before you head into the final helix. And you got just a little pop of airtime there that I wasn't... Just a touch. You know, you can't do too much airtime on the bobsled coaster, obviously, but just a a touch that it was... um, Reptilian was my biggest surprise from King's Dominion. Um the new paint on the trains and the track looks great. great. The mm-hmm. the new theme fits great with the you know the new jungle expedition area. I I thought it was great. It was really I love I loved reptilian. Well done, reptilian. So, well done. So I, I enjoyed that one a lot. Um, next is Grizzly. Yeah, I'm not talking about that one. <laughs> so, Why are you on that one? So. Here's why I didn't have Haley get on Grizzly. So, Grizzly built by Taft in 1982, which I've never even heard of that manufacturer. So, <laughs> but it has PTC trains on it, the same as that's on Racer 75. So, so I we got on Grizzly, um, and not only like we rode in the middle of the train, so it wouldn't have been like super rough, but it shouldn't have been. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be smooth. I knew it was an old coaster. I'd heard people compare it to Wildcat, so I knew it wasn't going to be smooth. The These old PTC trains, if you're not familiar with them, they have, like, a little divider um, in between the two passengers that kind of... So that way you're not sitting on a bench. It kind of turns it into two separate seats, Mm -hmm. especially because it has two separate lap bars. So it makes sense. But, so, I was sitting in a seat by myself, and there was no one sitting next to me. And as we're going through the ride, it was it was fairly rough, um, you know, kind of what I anticipated. But at one point, I was, I was sitting in the right seat, and as you come over, up and over this airtime hill that goes to the right, so I got up and out of my seat, and then as it turns to the right, I shifted to the left, and when we came back out of the hill, I landed on the divider in between the two seats. Oh, no. <laughs> it was so painful. <laughs> it was the most painful experience I've had on a coaster. And so I literally, when I got off that ride, I literally told Haley, I was like, Dumb. I wouldn't even do it for the credit. Like, it just, it needs some serious help. Um, yeah, that, that was not a fun experience. <laughs> So, All right, so well, it's crazy to me that that's ranked above Anaconda yeah. and Reptilian. I was like, I don't know if did I just get a bad ride, but I, man, it was I was it was a horrible ride. So I don't know. We're curious to see what you guys have to say about Grizzly. Let us know. In yeah, the if you if I just got a bad ride, let me know because that was that was a rough ride and I did not enjoy it at all. Um. Anyway, moving on. So next on the list is Backlot Stunt Coaster. Okay. Which I have mixed feelings about. 
<laughs> so, because we had two rides on it. Tell, and me, one ri- tell me your mixed feelings. The one ride, I loved it. And the next ride, I hated it. <laughs> so, where I sat completely changed my ride experience. So, mm-hmm. so the first time we rode it um, on Friday, right. we sat... Did we sit front row? We did, yeah. So, we sat... So, yeah, I think our friends sat in the front row, so we were second row. And the launch isn't... I, I mean, it is it's what it launch, is. Yeah. It's a launch. It's not super powerful. It's not meant to be. The G forces on the triple helix surprisingly intense for a family coaster, and then after that, it just kind of meanders around mm-hmm. in the front row. At least you don't you don't get any airtime or anything. Um, the theming's not bad. I will say at King's Dominion, the practical effects were not working properly. I don't know if that's typical or if they just didn't have them up and running for the beginning of the season yet. But when we went to Kings Island last week, yes, their effects were in full full effect, and it, it looked, looked really great. it did yeah. look great. So those points against Kings Dominion's version um, in my book for that. But then um, you come to the stop, and then the indoor section. I really had a lot of fun with that, yeah. like that swooping right turn right into the indoor section, and then. That drop coming out of the the hole in the billboard. No, I will say riding in the back was a completely different. Thing. So well, yeah, so we'll get to that. So I was mad at you because I was like, "That was crazy." Like, okay, so okay, so our first ride, I enjoyed it. I don't know what your opinion was that that no, first I ride. It. Yeah, it was you know pretty typical family launch coaster. I would have I would have probably ranked it right around Slinky Dog Dash. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of that same ballpark. So, but then Saturday, the park was still dead. So I was like, I want to get a back row ride on Backlot Stunt Coaster. See if, what kind of airtime you can get. So we rode... You made me get on with you. I didn't make you do anything. No, you didn't. But, like, you, I got on with you, and after we got off... Well, okay, so the <laughs> so the, the beginning's basically the same. You do get some, some airtime in the back row as you're going through the yeah. middle section of the ride, which was fun. But um, then we got to that last drop, and the the airtime was really intense. Like, you got some decent ejector airtime, but then when you bottom out at the bottom of that drop, it just slams you back into your seat. Oh, yeah. And it hurt so bad. It so bad. And that's why I was mad at you. Well, <laughs> and it... The, I told you Why this. Did you get me on this? Well, and I told you this the way the seat was designed, the coaster hit me where I didn't want to be hit. <laughs> I was. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that, but I was, I was not happy with the ride at that point. So that's why I say I have mixed opinions about Backlot Stunt Coaster because of that. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I probably will never ride it in the back row again. So. <laughs> But you do. You're um, by yourself. So. I don't know. It was, it was, yeah. I was not anticipating that. So, okay. And then next is Racer seventy five. I love racing coasters, so I hate to say it, but I wasn't as big of a fan as I thought that would be. Like, well, it I didn't help that, was... that it wasn't actually racing. When we well, went. that, but then like the fact too that it was just like. I don't know. I thought it was like mediocre of a ride. Like I really like the racer at Kenya a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um, but then, like, I thought it was uncomfortable. Like I just yeah. The the PTC restraints on that one were they weren't that great. No. They they were kind of and like neither of us are super skinny, but we're not huge mm-hmm. either. So like I didn't I didn't, you know I felt like most of the restraints we experienced throughout the trip were pretty comfortable but those ptc ones were you know they were they were kind of uncomfortable not the most uncomfortable restraints of the trip but they were not comfortable by any means so i my issue i had with racer 75 is i got like no airtime on it yeah and i I don't know if it was just i don't know if it was just running slow because it was raining um but yeah i just like i I, I expected more airtime just based on the POVs I had seen, especially because when you come over that first drop, 
you don't go into a big hill, you go into like a low to the ground speed hill. And I was anticipating some decent airtime over that hill, and I got nothing. I got I got basically nothing. Yeah. So it was fine. It was you know it was better than Grizzly, but uh, <laughs> like I said, I enjoyed Woodstock Express more because I got more airtime on that mm-hmm. one. So um, I don't know. Yeah. It, it wasn't a bad coaster. It just it, it was disappointing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was for as big as it is, I expected more. Yes. So. Yeah, I agree. So, all right. Can I guess the next one? What's What's the next one? Is it Flight of Fear? Flight of Fear Yay! is the next one. I. Loved this is it. where. Okay, this is where. I, from the, From here on it. out, I enjoyed all the coasters yes. that are on left on the we list. We have nothing so. but good things after this. So. But yeah. So I'll let you start with Flight of Fear. I loved Flight of Fear. I loved. Obviously, we've talked about the theming, um, but. For an indoor coaster, I thought it was so fun. Like going indoor off coasters and, like, just have a different feel. They do. Yeah. They do. And I loved like I'm like getting shot off into the dark mm-hmm. and like not seeing where you were going. It gave me such like that Space Mountain vibe. It was and like then, Space Mountain's theme mixed with rock and roll coasters coaster. experience. Yes, and that's so, like exactly what it was for me. And it was just crazy. I loved it. I don't know. I loved it. I loved the inversions and the swoopiness of it and some airtime. Like I don't know. I just thought it was a lot of fun and I liked I liked Flight of Fear. I thought that was one of my that was actually one of my favorites. So no, I, I won't spoiler. leave it. Yeah, <laughs> it was, I won't leave it. We'll see where you find the where you put it. But no, I'm not. I, I won't look. I won't He's look, looking so. at my list. So. Um, <laughs> Flight of Fear for me, my biggest comparison going into it was Rock and Roller Coaster. Okay. Um, because I, I really enjoy Rock and Roller Coaster, especially because I'm a big music person right. and I really like rock music. So, like, I love the theme of Rock and Roller Coaster just as much as I love the the ride experience. And so I was curious to see how Flight of Fear compared to that. Flight of Fear only has lap bars, which I liked more than mm-hmm. Rock and Roller Coaster. Mm-hmm. The launch isn't as intense, but still decent. It was a decent it's launch. De- it's decent. Yeah. It's, I, I think getting launched in five years ago, I probably would have enjoyed it more. But now that I've been on Storm Runner and Accelerator, like... <laughs> that launch kind of pales right. in comparison to those, but still a decent launch. Mm-hmm. Um, I liked that there is still a little bit of light in the the building so that you can still kind of see what's going on. It's not just completely pitch black, which is like the same as Rock and Roller Coaster. There's lights here and there so that you can still kind of see what's going on. Right. Um, though the launch for Flight of Fear isn't as intense, I felt like the ride... After that was more intense on yeah. Flight of Fear. Yeah. So the first half was kind of like big swooping elephants. Uh, elephants. Oh elephants. My gosh. Wow. You need to go to bed. Apparently. <laughs> big swooping elephants. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Our new mantra. Swooping, swooping elephants. elephants. Big <laughs> swooping <laughs> elements. Um, I'm not crazy about the mid-course break run, but... It didn't kill the ride for no. me. I wish it wasn't there, but it didn't kill the ride. But then after that, the rest of the elements were, like, really low to the ground and, like, s- speedy and, like, I don't know. It was just the, the rest of the ride was really intense. And then, you know, it just fun. runs right into the final break. So it was good. Um, I kind of have it ranked probably exactly kind of where most people would rank it. But, uh, well, like I said, we'll go over our ranks at the end. But... I, I did enjoy it. It was a lot of fun. So I still rank Rock and Roller Coaster better just because of the, I like the theme better. But right. overall, they're very similar, I think. Yep. So. yep. Alrighty. Do you want to guess nice. the next one? I don't know. I'm going to say Dominator. Dominator is the next one. Okay. So, I know you don't have a crazy opinion about Dominator, mostly because of the restraints. So, and we've talked about how you feel about the those B&M over the, whole, over the shoulder say, restraints. I turned pretty white getting off that coaster. So, <laughs> so was it just beca- from getting your yeah, head slammed around? I just around? getting whipped around. I just, I don't know. 
Like it, so if they had defensively, and I still felt like yeah, I, I don't know. So I'm curious because we rode Banshee the week after that. If we if that ride had Banshee's restraints on it, I think I would have liked it a lot better. I w- I kind of wish a, a lot of people don't like those vest restraints. They say you don't get as much airtime. They don't bother me at no. all. I love the vest restraints. Yeah, I, I wish every B and M coaster had the vest. Rest- well. Every B&M over-the-shoulder restraint was a best restraint. So I wish Wildfire had those. Yeah. I wish Dominator had them. I don't know. I so. just, for someone that's on the shorter side, like... I will say it impacts shorter people more than it impacts people that are, like, yeah. my height and taller. Exactly. Because, like, for me, it's kind of down here by, like, my cheeks. cheeks and my chin. But for you, like, your whole it's head. head. Yeah. And it hurts. So, I don't know. As a general public who's on the shorter side... I didn't like Dominator as much as most people do mm-hmm. because of the restraints. Like, yeah. I just, yeah. I felt like I had the biggest migraine getting off of it. Yeah. So. Makes sense. So, same, kind of the same experience you have with Wildfire, which yeah. makes sense. Yeah. I would say it's a little smoother than it Wildfire. It is smoother than Wildfire. Yeah. So. Which, um. It was smooth. It was great. I loved it except for the restraints. So. Mm-hmm. So. It was, yeah. So, that that's my two cents. Yeah, I I really enjoyed Dominator. Um, I, it wasn't anything groundbreaking for me, yeah. but it was a lot of fun. My favorite part about it is how awesome it looks, like the just where they have it located and where you can walk under several parts. Yes. Like you can take so many awesome you know, pictures honestly, of Dominator. I think it took a long I probably time. I probably took more pictures of Dominator <laughs> than any other ride while well, we were there. I was going to say we probably took. Like, it took longer for you to take pictures than it did for us to wait to get on the ride. Oh, definitely. I think every time we rode it, we walked right on. Yeah. Well, you rode it. I only rode it once. I think I rode it twice, and I basically walked on both times. So, yeah. yeah. But it was uh, it was a fun ride. Um, I don't know. It's you know, just a typical B&M looping yeah. coaster. So, nothing too crazy. But it was a lot of fun and um, even more fun to to watch and take pictures of i think so i do one thing i like about dominator is it isn't just back-to-back inversions like you go through that first loop and then you hit like a a couple bank turns and then you go through the cobra roll and then you hit like a big turn and so like they kind of break up the inversions because of how long the coaster is which i appreciate um gives you kind of time to rest your your head in between the the head banging on the inversion. So, yeah. All righty, we got two more to go. Intimidator. You think Intimidator's next? It is next. So Intimidator three oh five. I was more nervous to ride this than I've been to ride any coaster. When was the last time I was that nervous to ride a coaster? Probably, probably either Storm Runner or Candemonium, hmm. because Storm Runner was like I knew Storm Runner was going to be the fastest launch I had ever been on, mm-hmm. and I didn't know what to expect if I would hate that or love that. Yeah. And then Candemonium was the tallest coaster I had ever been on up to that point. So now looking back, both of those don't scare me at all, but. Like, Intimidator was the first Giga Coaster I had been on, that either of us had been on. And I had heard the, you know, the reputation it had for being the most intense coaster in the country. And it was intense. It is so but, intense. But, for it being intense, I loved it. It was so was much fun. so funny, because, like, <laughs> as a general public, you, like, take one look at it, and you're like, mm, No. Well, that's why it never has a line because no. the GP looked mm-hmm. at it. We we walked by those two guys. You remember? <laughs> we, we I did not want to get on with them. Let me just tell you. So we um we had just been on it and we were walking back into the like because it's at the very back of the park by itself and so you right. have to walk away from it mm-hmm. to go to everything else. And as we were passing by these two guys, they were just sitting Sweet. there looking at it, drinking Bud Light. They were both drinking a Bud Light and. They asked us, like, was it as bad as it looks? And we're like, oh, we loved it. And they're like, okay. 
We're drinking our liquid courage <laughs> trying to convince ourselves to go on it. So I, like, I think that's how a lot of people feel about Intimidator yeah. 305 is just... It's intimidating. I mean, you know, the name is very fitting. Is. You're just looking like, at it, so I don't know. It's it's hard to because it's like you know you don't want to be dishonest and say it was like you know not as bad as what people say it is. It is. It's, it's it is intense. Yeah, because like you know you come down over that hill and that first like really big bank like I grayed out on mm -hmm. both times. Three times. Yeah, you wrote it twice and you grayed out both times. I wrote it three times and I grayed out two of the three times. Uh -huh. So it is an intense ride, but I will say I loved it. Like I loved, you know, I don't know. I liked the intensity. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. And like, so I rode the first time, rode towards the front. The second time I rode in the back. Which I... You would do that, I but do that. I loved back row. Ew. Back row was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just flung you over the top of that first hill, and you <laughs> were just falling for 300 feet. <laughs> that would have freaked me out, I think. But Well, it was the same experience you had on Orion, basically. I don't know. I don't know. I'm really afraid to do it. So, but, um, yeah, it was, it was awesome. You get more airtime going over that second hill in the back row, too. Though, I will say, when we rode in front row, I got some decent airtime on that hill, too. So, I don't know, maybe it's just the middle of the train that's not getting as much airtime, but I, I've most people, that's their complaint, is that ride has no airtime, and I'm like, I mean, yeah, but that's what it's designed to do, you it's know. Fast, it's, yeah. yeah, it's a speed machine with, you know, fast turns and crazy laterals, you know, the transitions between yep. the turns, those parts are crazy, are so, nuts. but, um. Yeah, it's not a super comfortable coaster. I will say the the um, the shoulder straps that they have. Um, when I get off the ride, my shoulders are a little sore just from the I transitions. Didn't, didn't you didn't notice that, mm -hmm. so but like it didn't bother me because of how much fun I was having. So yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Just when you get on it, like just plan to maybe just take a breather afterwards <coughs> because it is intense. Like you need to. Yeah. They always tell you make sure you're extremely hydrated. Yes, the the, the biggest and don't eat because oh, we literally like had to. Was... We got kicked off because we were like about to get on the ride and, and someone threw up on the train in front of us yeah. and we had to get out of line yeah. while they. You know, spent half an hour cleaning everything. Oh, so terrible. So. And I felt bad for the person, but at the same time, I'm like, don't. Don't eat, eat before it. you go don't on a coaster. Eat. Any coaster, let alone that one. So, yeah. It, um, yeah, it was a fun ride. I think the biggest tip I got from other people was to stay hydrated before you go on yep. it. And I would. And after. Stay and after. And after. Yep. Yeah. And I would, I would echo that because yep. I think that made a big difference in our ride experience. So. But it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. So. Yep. All right, here we go. Oh, the big one. Twisted Timbers. Twisted Timbers. I'll let you start on Twisted Timbers. Why? You want me to start? Yes, I do. I loved <laughs> Twisted Timbers. So, uh, built by RMC, 2018. Incredible. It's only the second RMC I've been on. The first one being um, Outlaw Run at Silver Dollar City, right. which that one's a wooden but RMC. And and I love Outlaw Run. Yeah. But I was stoked to try Twisted Timbers because it was my first Steel Ibox Track RMC coaster. And I've heard from so many people that it's top five, top ten in the country. And... Um, it was so, so good. It's so impressive fun. how much they're able to pack into that coaster. And it only be... How tall is it? I've got it right here. Mm -hmm. It was so much fun. It's only... Where is it? It's it's 110 feet tall. It's, it's, it's not even as tall as like... Um, I'm trying to see... It's like the same height. Well, it's not even as tall as like the Beast. It's not as tall as Lightning Racer at Hershey Park. Hmm. 
like it's not even as tall as uh, it's, it is taller than Comet at Hershey Park, but you know it's it's right in that. It's not a super tall coaster, but what was, they're able to yeah, do with it is it just insane. incredible. It was so fun. I will say, I am not a person to get on a ride. Like, if they offered to like stay on the ride to go again, I'm usually like, no, I want to get off. Like, I need a breather. <laughs> But with this one, I loved it so much that I did do that. Like I was... We got to do that twice. Yes. So we, we rode Twisted Timbers in those two days. We rode it five times. Oh, it was so Definitely good. could have rode it more, more because the line was always five, ten minutes the whole time. We walked on pretty much every time. Mm-hmm. And on. so there was two times where they just let us stay on the train and ride it again? back to back. And we're like, yes. uh, duh. <laughs> so... <laughs> Um, it was so great. Yeah, so we got, you know, that was the first thing we rode when we got there. We also, we got a night, a couple night rides um, on Twisted Timbers. Mm-hmm. Just incredible. Was, yeah, all the, around. Yeah, the so airtime is next level. Yeah. Like, those three camelbacks, so, you know, you come down to that, okay, first of all, the Twisted first drop is awesome i love that oh i can't even describe to you like never had an experience like that on a coaster before um and then you come through that first big overbank turn and then there's the three camelbacks i feel like each one's stronger than the the last one just feels like it's gonna shoot you out of your seat and to the moon like (laughs) um and then there's like those um in the middle of the ride, there's a couple drops that there's like, it like tilts to one side and then it tilts to the other. I loved those. Mm-hmm. There's another section where it goes under the track and it like straightens out and then banks again yeah. as it's coming down. So it like flings you up out of your seat and then yanks you back down to the right. Like oh. it's, it's relentless. It's like, but it was so- it's relentless in a good way. Like, like there's no boring part of the ride. No. Like you're never, you never have a second to catch your breath. Like it's just one thing after another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It was so, it was so fun. Favorite, favorite element on the ride. Like what was your, what's your favorite part of the ride? I really liked the first like beginning, like where you just go in and immediately you're turned like upside the, down. The, to the, so the barrel roll drop. Yes. Like, I thought that was... That was like, really fun. Like, so. you're just not expecting that. You're expecting to just go up and then get dropped down. But instead, you just put right immediately into a barrel roll. Like, that was just so fun for me. Like... I think I like that one. I think that's my second favorite part. But I think my favorite is those off-axis airtime hills in the middle of the ride. Those yeah. are a lot of fun, too. Yeah. So... Anyways. Great, oh, great coaster. Twisted Timbers. Great so evening. much. So good. So... I will say, I think my... my biggest tip is please 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 make sure you guys use lockers for this ride because we <clears throat> saw a lot of people try to get on to the ride with things in their pockets and they will not let you yep so period. like they will like you need to pull everything out of your pockets so if you want to have your phone in line fine but they will make you take it out before you get on the ride. Yeah, so, so be aware of that because, like, you know, as a mom, like, there was a mom with a group and she got separated from her kids because she didn't take the things out of her pockets. And they and just, they, they kind of left her behind. They forced her to take things out of her pockets and she's like, I need to be with my kids. And they were like, no, you cannot have your things in your pockets. And I don't know, like, I felt bad for it, but at the same time, I'm like, you got to, like, understand that going into this ride, no exceptions. You have yeah, to have the, everything out. The, it's a new policy because they didn't they didn't have this issue when they opened it, but the, the airtime is so intense on it that, like, people were just, that they're, like, literally having phones fly out of pockets. And so they, um, and I think they originally had, like, a little pouch that you could put it in. But then when COVID hit, they didn't want people touching pouches. So rather than do that, they took the pouches off and implemented the oh, lockers yeah. and the metal detector instead. And it's just cheaper to keep it that way now. Honestly, so I like it. I it's liked, not bad. I, I mean, if you the sense of security that my phone okay, it's in a safe spot. 
you quickly, it's very, very near to the front of the, the line, so you're not long without your phone. Mm-hmm. Like, you well, it and off, even it, it like if, if the line is short enough that you can just hop on again, you can just leave it in the locker and exactly. just hop right back in line. Exactly. That's no big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And the, the one thing I wish, and this will be something I'll, I'll nitpick a little bit about, but it's not like a huge deal. I don't like that King's Dominion charged you $2 to use the ride, the lockers outside the ride. It's like, I already paid to get into the park. Now you're just nickel and diming me yes. for something so they that's... Did that at King's Island too. We just went yeah, to the but New Hershey Island. Park, they're free. They're yeah, free. So when you go to Hershey Park, you have to take your bag off for Super Duper Looper and Candemonium. You can't have it in line with you. But they have they have lockers just outside, and the lockers are free. Mm-hmm. King's Dominion, King's Island, that cost money, yeah. and I didn't like that. So the set the second day at King's Dominion, we just rented an all day locker because it was Which... cheaper. Yeah, and it was worth it. It was worth it, but I wish you—I wish you didn't have to. You know, yeah. It just, yeah, you know, it was kind of frustrating. It's like I, you're requiring me to pay money to ride this ride, essentially, yeah. because I brought a bag with me, yeah. and that sucks. So, I don't know. I, I, I don't agree with that policy, but it is what it is. So, but I will not let that detract from how much I enjoy Twisted Timbers because no, it, it, it was it was fantastic. Cool. It was so fun. So. so. Okay. All right. Before we get into the list, like our, our top what it mm-hmm. list, I am curious. What are your tips that you have for people going to this park? Like, what are some, like maybe your top three tips? Top three have? tips for Kings Dominion specifically. Yeah, for Kings Dominion, like going to Kings Dominion. So number yeah, in Kings Dominion. What are your, top three so two i've kind of mentioned already one is staying hydrated because of how intense Mm -hmm. intimidator 305 is um it's important to stay hydrated at any park but especially here because it'll affect your experience on that ride number two is just understanding which rides you can and can't have bags because there are a lot of rides um flight of fear you can't bring a bag in line with you intimidator you can't Twisted Timbers, you can't, and just, and like we just mentioned, the the phones have to stay in the, the small lockers that are in line. So there's just a lot to be aware of as far as um, the stuff you have on you is concerned, um, more so than other parts that I've been to. Um, I'm trying to think the last one would be... Um, I don't know, any, anything else come to mind? I mean, I think, again the whole locker situation. I think, okay, if you're going to bring stuff into the park, get the day locker. Um, mm, it's worth, true. it's worth, you know, that $15 that you, you put into it. You um, will have to go to the front of the park every time you need yeah, to access it, but that's a disadvantage, but the park's not super huge though. No. Not, not as big as Kings Island. I don't think no. at least not. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know the exact numbers, but it just it felt smaller than it was easy Kings, access. Yeah, than Kings no. Island did. So. Anyways, needless to say, I will say, say I did think of another one. If you're going and it's not super crazy, don't worry about getting preferred parking. No, I didn't feel like the preferred parking and the regular parking was that big of a difference. It really, really was. Especially with how dead it was when we were there. Yeah, like it was like. Yeah. Like a 30, yeah. I don't know, 40, 50 yard difference. <laughs> and it's like, I don't know how much it was. but Okay, my other tip is, if you're going to laugh, is don't let the weather affect your decision on going. <laughs> because this might just me be I... a overall amusement park yes. tip but, well, but yeah, like, especially Nathan, this area <laughs> Nathan and I like went and like you know we're at the hotel and we're reading like the weather apps and everything well and we've been like, checking weather for the like, 10 weeks, well the yeah. 10 days that the weather goes out yeah. right and so we're like oh my gosh it's gonna pour it looked it's horrible. gonna thunderstorm like we're not gonna be able to get on anything it was like 80 percent chance of thunderstorm yeah. on friday 90 yeah. percent chance on saturday we're <laughs> like so oh we're like, my oh, gosh no. but we were like you know what we're gonna go we're just gonna make the best of it and it will be what it be and like we went and it was perfect like it was the most perfect weather and because i mean it wasn't said, perfect weather but it was perfect weather because 
It scared the crowds away. Yes, and, so and no there one was came. Literally, no one there. I mean, there so was more, like, it was really cloudy and dreary all day Friday, but it barely rained. Yeah. And then Saturday morning, it rained a little like bit. The sun even came. But the yes, yeah, Saturday <laughs> afternoon was gorgeous. <laughs> Yeah, so I will say just don't let that affect your decision on going. Like, please try and make an effort to go still. And even if it is raining, like, just make the best of it. There's flat rides. And coasters are sometimes even open in the rain. Like, <laughs> I have another tip. Don't ride Intimidator 305 in the <laughs> rain. It's oh, awful. my gosh, that sucked. It um, was barely drizzling. and It felt like I was getting shot in the face. <laughs> it was so bad. Um... So, and then, okay, so lockers, weather. I got all kinds of tips now. <laughs> um, and I will say something I regret not doing was doing a dining plan. Um, really? I don't think with, with our season passes we get the, the discount. The season pass, yes, I will say it wasn't bad. But, like, if I, like, as a general public member, I would say the dining plan I think is worth it. And you can buy single-day dining plans mm-hmm. if you're going to be there for a day. And that might be worth it if, yeah. if you're going. Because and you don't have a season pass to give you a discount. Well, it is nice because they give you, like, basically you can get a meal every 90 minutes if you want to. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no limit. So, like, with as much as I enjoyed the food there, um, I... I would say it would be worth it to get the dining plan. Yeah, potentially. It was it was nice for someone that had food allergies. It was nice. Anyways, I overall I say dining plan should you know be something to consider for anybody that's kind of thinking about you know getting it. I say go for it. Yeah. So, um. But yeah, enjoy your trip, guys. Yeah. It was fun. I I liked King's Dominion. A lot more than I was expecting to, I would say. So, I was pleasantly yeah, surprised. The, I, I'm not going to spoil too much because I know we, we still need to do our trip report for Kings Island. But a lot of people will say Kings Island is, if not the number two park, well, from, from an enthusiast standpoint. So not thinking about Disney and Universal because that... You know, those aren't necessarily big coaster parks, but as far as you know, the GP is concerned, mm-hmm. and if you're into dark rides and flat rides, um, that's a whole different ball game. But as far as coaster parks are concerned, a lot of people would say Kings Island is number two, if not number one, in the country. Um, and then Kings Dominion is you know further down the list. Some people would even put Kings Dominion outside their top fifteen, yeah. and. I don't know. We'll like I said, we'll talk about Kings Island, but I really Kings Dominion really surprised me with how well um, I enjoyed I the it. experience. I think the coasters at Kings Island were, if were probably better, and I'll I'll go into more detail on that in our next episode. But I think the atmosphere and the theming of Kings Dominion is better. Yes. So I would. I would almost equal the parks where most people would put Kings Dominion way further down on their list. So, um, so yeah, big praise for Kings Dominion. I really enjoyed the park. Mm -hmm. Um, I wish we could have been able to do the Eiffel Tower, but I don't know. It It is. I I can nitpick on things all day, but in the end, it was a a fantastic trip, and I really enjoyed it. it, So, so so let's close this out. With our rankings. So, well, so let me, here's what I'm thinking. Since I wrote all 12, let me do my number 12 and number 11. Okay. And then we'll alternate back and forth from there. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, my number 12 is Grizzly. I hate (laughs) Grizzly so much. (laughs) Oh, Grizzly. It needs some help. It's not a bad layout either. It just, need some serious work and I don't know what they'll do but anyway my number 11 is actually racer 75 okay just it wasn't bad it just it didn't do anything for me I don't know it was just kind of forgettable and like I even wrote it a second time in the back row to see if I was missing something there and uh, I got a little bit more air time but Mm -hmm. it was fun so all right so let's start with your number 10 Alright, Apple's Apple. Apple's Apple's also my number 10. Okay. So, it, I mean, it is what it is. It's a wild mouse. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, 
Woodstock. Really Woodstock crazy. series. My number nine is Backlot Stunt Coaster. Okay. Because it beat me up. I was mad. Okay. I was mad at it. <laughs> All right. Number eight for me was Anaconda. Number Anaconda is also my number eight. Number seven was Racer. 75. Race 75. I have a hard time choosing between Racer and Anaconda. Okay. So that was hard for me. So I put I have Woodstock Express. Okay. At my number seven. Okay. Which people probably I probably get some flack for that. Put Woodstock <laughs> Express above Anaconda and Backlot Stunt Coaster, <laughs> but it didn't beat me up, and I got some airtime. So yeah, that's that's that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Backlot Stunt Coaster is my next one. So I had Tumbili at number six. Okay. Number five was Dominator. For okay. Me. Yep, makes sense. I have Flight of Fear at number five, actually. Okay. So, a little bit lower than most people, but... Okay. Next one is Reptilian. See, I have Reptilian at number four, too. I... Yeah. So, putting Reptilian above Flight of Fear was... I didn't anticipate that, but it was so much fun. It was a lot of fun. And the theming was just great, too. They did a great job with the re-theme, so... So then you must have <coughs> Flight of Fear at number three. Yeah. Okay. So that's I have Dominator at number okay. three. And then, and then I then our top two must be the same. Yeah. I also have Intimidator three hundred five at number and two. Timbers. And clear clear winner. Clear winner. Twisted Timbers For sure. was excellent. And I so that what's interesting about my ranking is my top three actually match what the coaster bot rankings would say so among enthusiasts my top three kind of match but then from then on it kind of gets a little a little different so i give reptilian a lot more credit than most people do and i hate grizzly <laughs> a lot more than people do so uh, i feel like everyone has their one coaster that they just they love to hate it and i feel like grizzly's just gonna have to be that one for me <laughs> At least for the time being. So we can uh, go back. And yeah. I, well, and, you know, even if they don't do work on it between now and then, I'll still give it another ride. Just, you know, give it the benefit of a doubt. Shot. Yeah. So, but I knew what I, I, I wasn't about to do it again while, while we were there. But, <laughs> so. You would need a chiropractor if you did. So. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. All right. Well, well that we yeah. So that's that's our trip report for Kings Dominion 2022. Yes, thanks it was for yeah. Around. Thanks for thanks for listening. I know this episode's a little longer than usual, and you know, just kind of us sharing our thoughts. But uh, hopefully, you enjoyed it. Hopefully, you learned some things, and maybe you have your own opinions you'd like to share with us. If you want yeah, to, you can. To yeah, you can follow us on Twitter. The our um, handle is at Airtime Traveler. We're also at the same place. Um, Instagram is at Airtime Traveler. And uh, yeah, be sure to follow us here on Spotify so you can be alerted for, uh, like I said, on Monday we'll be dropping a new um, official episode, episode five, um, talking about one of these coasters that we just talked about. You'll have to you have to tune in on Monday to see which one it is. And I then, don't, yeah, don't Haley know. doesn't even know. And then we will be, at some point, probably next week, we'll be recording um, our trip report for Kings Island, where we will talk um, about our experience there as well. And then we will be going to at least Worlds of, well, yeah, probably Worlds of Fun, Hershey Park, and Cedar Point. Maybe Kennywood. Maybe Kennywood, maybe Silver Dollar City. Maybe, maybe. Maybe, It's all dependent on finances. And then... We definitely will be going to Disney World at the end of the year. So be sure to follow us so that you can hear all of our trip reports for all of those parks as well. And yeah, thanks for tuning in. And be sure to tune in on Monday for episode five of Airtime Traveler. Uh, any final thoughts? No, no I'm good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. And be sure to turn in to episode five of Airtime Traveler on Monday. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Bye.